Hi, and welcome to this video. This time tracker makes use of advanced Notion databases and relations to display your most important activities in a day, in weeks, months, and a year, and provide you with information and statistical data on how you spend your time on each of your life buckets. So while previously we saw a minimal time tracker in Notion that used simple tables, one of Notion's newest features, this time we make use of databases to provide statistical data about how you spend your time. And this template is a time tracker, not a time blocker. So time tracking is retrospective. You can keep track of your activities to understand how you spend your time on your most essential buckets and projects. But if you want to block time to make sure that you focus on what matters, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, that's a prospective activity that I suggest be done on a calendar app that is more suitable for that. So this time tracker uses Notion's databases. And so it is a bit of a more frictional experience to input data compared to a simple table. That's the version of the minimal time tracker that we saw some weeks ago but it comes with the benefit of statistics. And so on the advanced time tracker, you can also see statistics about your week, your month, your year. And so you can figure out an overall picture of how you spend your time and whether you should balance your scale better to focus on some buckets or projects that you are neglecting. So let's dive right in and understand the functioning of the system and the databases included. Before doing that, we can see that there are three main databases here, buckets, projects, and the time tracker. For buckets and projects, if you already have a system in place in Notion and you already have databases for your areas and your projects, then I think it's a good idea if you link or relate your existing databases to the time tracker so that you can include this functionality, but still keep the overall structure that you have and implement this system harmoniously in your current system. If instead you want to start from scratch to have the time tracking feature and also categorize your activities by buckets or areas, then you can keep these databases. On the main dashboard, you can quickly add a new activity at any time right here. So when you click on it, you can jot down an activity and that view acts as an inbox where you can quickly jot down activities. And if you don't want to refine them in the moment, you can go through them later on in the day. But let's say this activity is this. First thing that you do is you relate this activity to a bucket or area of your life. So to which area does this activity relate? And there are four predefined areas, and these are taken from Cal Newport's framework of the deep life, craft, contemplation, constitution, and community. These four areas are meant to cover your entire life because chances are the activity that you do falls under one of these categories, and they are quite generic. In this case, this activity, let's assume, is a craft activity, so related to work or leisure. There is also a relation to a project, and this is useful if you want to keep track of how you spend your time on a specific project. If instead you think that you don't need this functionality, you can at any time delete this relation from here, and also delete the projects database if you will not use it. Next up, you can add the started time. So at what time did you start this activity and how long did it last? So this was today and then include the time. And let's say this was 11 a.m. And let's define the duration in minutes. And let's say this is 20 minutes. So the ended time is automatically given based on the duration and the start date. 
And if you want to have any notes about this activity or comments, you can type them down here. And there's also an option to keep track of your energy level. So how energetic did you feel doing that activity? And the reason behind this option is that you might understand patterns once you have enough data to figure out which activities make you feel good, which activities consistently don't make you feel in your best way. And so you can double down on what feels okay and you can reconsider what doesn't feel good, why, and then recalibrate how you spend your time based on that. And right here, because this activity took place today, it shows up right here on this dedicated view. That's how am I spending my time today? Every day you will have all the activities in ascending order displayed right here so that at the end of the day, you can look back at the day and see which activities you did during that day. On the dashboard then, you can quickly access the four buckets that come with this template. And you can also see how many minutes per bucket you spend today, right here on the card itself. And when you open the card, inside of it, you can see all the time tracking that you did for that specific bucket over time, right here. Here, you can access projects. But if you do not use the projects database here, you can just select the six dots here and delete everything. And then there is a review and reflect part of this system. And this is where the statistics come into play. So when you open this week, you will see all the activities you took part in this week. And you can also see them by bucket, where each activity is grouped by bucket and each bucket is a toggle that you can expand to see all the activities right here. And you can see the past week this month, the past month, this quarter, the past quarter, this year, last year. And so once you have enough data point, you can start to see patterns. And if you categorize your time properly within each bucket, then when you open the bucket, you can also see recurring themes or patterns for each bucket. And you can reflect, review and adjust accordingly based on your goals and trajectory that you want to take. And that is the advanced time tracker. So the word advanced simply refers to the fact that this system uses databases, relations, and many formulae to show statistical data about how you spend your time. There is some additional friction to add activities because every time you add an activity, you need to go through the process that we saw earlier to add all the properties. But the benefit of that is that once you add enough activities, you have data to look back at and understand patterns and adjust accordingly in order to live a deeper, more intentional life with your time, buckets and activities. Thank you for watching. You can find the link to download this template in the video description and see you soon.